Welcome to the House of Ham. This is Bob, WV7W, and we're going to start this session off by installing the four PA transistors, and then we'll also do T1 after that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to bend the legs of these transistors, and you'll notice I use my needle nose pliers as a guide to bend the legs to 90 degrees. And the just so happened my needle nose pliers had the perfect distance so that when this lays flat on the on the pad there, it's it's pretty well centered. You don't want it to be too far out because then the screw will be in the way, uh, and you don't want it to be uh, too close either, so that the uh, the washer when we put it on there as the heat sink will touch properly. So make sure you get it right when you uh, put them in there, um, so that they sit basically like what you're seeing here in the image. And once you get all the transistors placed, then what we can do next is we can go ahead and solder these. And what I do is I solder just one leg first, and then I make sure that the package is sitting flush to the PCB. If it's not, well, that one soldered, you can kind of bend it so that it'll sit right. It doesn't have to be touching necessarily because the uh, once we put the washer on that, we'll bring it down. But you do want it to be close. Now, one thing, one note of caution when doing these, the pads are pretty close together on this. Make sure you have no solder bridges. And also, don't hold the heat on too long on any uh, uh, solid state devices. They are heat sensitive. Now, this step is not in the manual, um, and I'm thanks to and a shout out to Steve KM9G or temporarily offline, as you may know, I'm on YouTube. Uh, he's the one that brought this as a good, uh, uh, you know, kind of added thing you can do is use some thermal paste like what you would use under a, uh, a CPU heat sink to help transfer that heat to the um, to the actual heat sink, which in this case is the washer and the screw. So this will uh, give a little better surface contact than just that little bit that would be touching the, um, the actual washer and give a little bit better uh, heat dissipation. So um, I put a link in the description um, of how you can get this thermal paste from Amazon. Um, uh, and you can use, there's a multiple different kinds you can use. Some work better than others. Uh, this is just one that I found that was fairly reasonably priced, but was rated really well. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to wind T1, which is a binocular toroid. And we're going to use this uh, 22 gauge wire which is uh, the thicker of the two bundles of wire that you get with the kit. Now, an important thing to note is that I am building this for 12 volts. So it is going to be a three primary windings and two secondary windings. If you're building it for nine volts, you're going to do three windings of both primary and secondary. And it talks about that in the instructions. But you need to make that decision up front. You don't want to use the 9-volt um, windings and then run 12 volts into it. You'll overpower the, um, the PA transistors and you can burn them up. So it's, you'll put out too many watts. So it's important to do this right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to straighten out this wire. Um, I went ahead and cut off kind of the curly cue of this. It just wasn't worth messing with it for the little tiny bit of wire that I was going to save. So I went ahead and cut that off. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pass the wire through and we're going to leave about a centimeter or roughly about an inch uh, hanging out. And then we're going to pass it through the other hole. And this is going to make up your first turn. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pass it through again. And this will now make one and a half turns. So as we pass this next one through, we're going to do a center tap. So we're not going to pass it all the way through. We're going to leave about a centimeter of the two tails hanging out. And then we're going to pinch them together. And that will become the center tap. And then we're going to do one last turn. So one pass through and then, uh, you know, 
another pass through the other one, and that will make our three turns of our primary winding. So this completes our primary winding, so we'll go ahead and cut that off. And then what we need to do is we need to feed it, and we're going to start so that the first leg is on the side with the center tap. So you want to have basically about a centimeter or an inch hanging out from the one side, and then we'll pass it through the other hole, and that will make turn number one for the secondary winding. And so it, you got to be kind of get it through and make sure you don't uh, cross over any of the other th any other stuff. So that can be kind of tricky. It's, uh, but once you do that, go ahead and thread it through again. That's one and a half turns. And then the final turn right here will make um, two primary turns for this 12 volt uh, T1. And then once you're done with that, you can we'll go ahead and we'll trim it off again, and that completes the winding of T1. So next we'll go ahead and bend these legs down, and then the instructions tell you to go ahead and cut the center tap loop um, so that it'll fit through the hole in the PCB. There's one hole that both these wires have to go through, so I uh, cut it and then uh, cut the little uh, bent edges off. And then what you have to do is you have to scrape off the enamel. The 22 gauge wire is a little too thick to be able to burn it off in place like you can with a thinner wire. It just it won't heat up enough. You'll end up heating up your PCB way too much um, and, and you may not get a good solder connection. And you also can't tin the wires ahead of time because they won't fit through the holes. So the manual cautions you on that. So now we're going to mount the T1 onto the board. What I did is I put the outer four legs on first. The remaining two, I used needle nose plower, pliers to uh, to poke those through the hole and then pulled them up from the back. Sorry, you couldn't really see that. It wasn't really on camera very well. But I went ahead and pulled them up. And then um, when I went to solder them, um, I used flux. Um, because these are larger wires, and just to make sure that we get a good solder connection, it's a good idea to use some flux. It'll just help things stick better. So go ahead and solder them up. And then uh, once we get them soldered, we'll go ahead and trim them off. The instructions show trimming them off beforehand, but uh, I prefer to trim the leads afterwards. My preference. Uh, you could do it either way. And then after I get them all trimmed off, it's a good idea to clean off the uh, flux with some alcohol or denatured alcohol. Um, that way you don't leave a residue behind. That res the uh, that flux residue can tend to be corrosive over time, so it's better to uh, to go ahead and clean it up. So the next thing we need to do is check continuity between the three A points and between the two B points, and there should be good continuity between those. So we'll check the A points. So the first two A points here have good continuity. And then the first and the third have good continuity. And now we'll check the two B points. And we've got good continuity there as well. So. We know we're good to go.